Hello Retro Gamers, welcome back to another episode of Retro Game On. Today I've got something a little bit special for you guys, as I attempt to review two things at the exact same time. Hopefully it doesn't evolve into chaos, but I'll make it to the end of this video not a changed man for the worst. The two items are luckily related however, so hopefully this shouldn't become too confusing. First off we have Time Crisis for the PS1, a light gun rail shooter released in 1997 by Namco. Secondly, we have the G-Con 45 or Guncon light gun depending on where you live, which was originally bundled with Time Crisis. Let's see how this weird hybrid freak abomination of a review goes, but first off I'm going to issue an epilepsy warning. I've never had to do it before and honestly I don't know that much about epilepsy, but there is going to be a lot of flashing in this review, <laughs> but by, by the game obviously, not, not by me. Time Crisis was originally released in the arcades in late 1995, but since I've unfortunately never played that in my life, we're going to be focusing on the PS1 port today. Quickly, let's talk about the story, as there isn't really that much to say. It's campy and it's tacky, but hey, I loved it for those very reasons. The president's daughter from some made-up nation gets kidnapped by terrorists, so it's up to you as a veteran agent from an international protection agency to save the day. I didn't really follow it after that, but check out this cool polygonal tie. Regardless, it doesn't take itself too seriously at all, and that results in it all just being a load of fun. It's kind of like an early 90s cheesy action film really, and since the game is on rails and you don't control where you move, it's very easy to soak in the environment and setting as you sit in for the ride. I've never really sat down and played a light gun game before, but gosh, I had so much fun. It's kind of like being in a real arcade, except without all the stale cigarette smoke and spilt coke. There are two modes, Arcade and Time Attack. Arcade is split into two story modes, one of which is explained above, and another where you infiltrate a hotel masquerading as an arms factory. In the Arcade mode you're being timed, but also have a select amount of lives and continue credits. The Time Attack mode isn't all that different, except there are no lives involved, and it's all about how far you can get before the timer expires. Time Crisis includes a BRC system, which was likely manufactured by the marketing team at Namco rather than the development staff. This stands for Brand Reflected Conditions, which monitors your accuracy and plays out the level accordingly. All this means is if you finish certain areas within certain time frames, the protagonist will take the elevator instead of the stairs, meaning differing gameplay depending on how well you're going. A cool idea, but I'm not sure if it needed a fancy name for it or not. Here's how the levels play out. The game will take you from one part of the level to the next after you've killed enough baddies. How long you stay in certain areas will differ, but the enemies will always attack you in the same sequence every time you restart. This means that there is a potential to become legendary at this game through memorization if you play enough, but I also feel that this weakens the arcade experience somewhat. What's cool is that you can take cover at any time by pushing a button on the light gun, which was originally a pedal on the arcade machine. I mostly use this while reloading since I'm being timed. There is no point being shot and losing a life while reloading as it can be avoided, but while shooting I very rarely took cover unless a grenade was being lobbed at me. I took the chance of being shot since there is literally an army to fight your way through in limited time to do so. Although having said that, sometimes the game will helpfully yell DANGER at you. Danger. Informing danger is indeed coming right at you and you have to take cover unless you want to lose a life. Anyway, none of this would be very fun at all without the light gun itself, so let's check it out. The Gun Con, or G-Con 45 as it was so called in Europe, was originally bundled with Time Crisis and then later sold separately. Using the cathode ray timing method to figure out where it's pointing on screen, the Gun Con includes a trigger as well as additional A and B buttons. These are used in the menus of Time Crisis and to take cover in game. According to the instruction manual, an additional adapter is required to interface it with the PlayStation and TV. However, I just plugged the RCA pass-through type plug directly into the TV and then plugged the normal PlayStation video cable into that. I'm not sure what the advantage of the adapter is, but I don't have any problems with my method. Additionally, the gun con also needs to be plugged into a controller port. The gun con is very easy to use, but you want to make sure that you calibrate it properly on the start of the game, or this will obviously cause problems as you play. Otherwise, using the light gun is a breeze. I found it to be very responsive, and if I miss a target, I found it hard to blame anyone except for myself. My only real complaint is that sometimes the wrist for my trigger finger would get a bit sore after prolonged play. This may have been from how I was sitting on the couch and holding it though. The Gun Con was compatible with a handful of other games as well, but unfortunately I don't own any of them so I can't do any additional testing. These include the Point Blank series, Resident Evil Survivor, and Die Hard Trilogy 2 Viva Las Vegas. There are a few PS2 games also compatible with the Gun Con, including Time Crisis 2 and 3 and Vampire Knight. Check the Wikipedia page on Gun Con if you want a more comprehensive list. After this there was the Gun Con 2 for PS2 games, also known as the G Con 2, as well as the Gun Con 3 for PS3 games. 
The GunCon 2 offered extra buttons over this model, but the GunCon 3 was compatible with flat screen TVs. I guess that's one thing I should probably mention. The original GunCon, like this one here, is not compatible with flat screen TVs. They only work for the older style CRTs. While the in-game worlds do suffer from PlayStation specific Action. problems like warped textures and insane anti-aliasing, there is a fair amount of detail included Action. making the environment somewhat believable. I understand it looks dated now, but I'm sure at the time such varied environments would have been very nice. I'm thinking that because you can't move around at your own will unless you're taking cover, the devs could really hone in on the detail with what you can see. Sure, the levels are in 3D environments, but I bet there are whole swaves of detail that are non-existent because you can never look in that direction, freeing up resources for what you can see. There are also plenty of cool action set pieces throughout the game making it all very exciting too. It's not all just about going from room to room shooting baddies. I found the music to be quite memorable. It fits in perfectly, being fast paced and exciting in its own right, and I'm sure a lot of gamers who played it back in the day will get nostalgic hearing it. The voiceover is a lot of fun to listen to as well, and even though repetitive, it wasn't annoying. Same goes for the enemy's dialogue too actually. It was repetitive, but for some reason this didn't bother me. Maybe something to do with the arcade experience? I'm not the best at this game, and I blame my inexperience of light gun games for that, which is a convenient excuse, I know. But I had a blast playing this. <laughs> Get it? Anyone? Regardless, this is a lot of fun, and I could not recommend it enough. Coming from someone who's never really played light gun games at all, I can vouch that this is a very easy entry into the genre. Hello retro gamers and thank you so much for watching. There's been a bit of activity on RetroGameOn.com lately, including my adventure in restoring a 1970s Texas Instruments scientific calculator, buying three PS1 Final Fantasy games for $3 each, and a double spread retro scan of a Harvey Norman advert from the mid 1990s showcasing the computers I was selling at the time. So if you want to check that stuff out and more, click the Retro Game On icon within the video, or follow the link in the description box. Anyway, that's all for today. Thank you again so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.